A food web can follow the complicated flow of energy through an ecosystem. A food web tries to capture all the energy transfers between organisms. The food web begins with producers. In this desert, the producers are plants such as cactus. Arrows represent the direction of energy flow from the producers to the consumers next. The primary consumers are the herbivores eating plants. Secondary consumers are carnivores or omnivores that eat the herbivores. You'll notice there are very few tertiary and quaternary consumers. By the time the energy has been transferred to the top of the food web, much of it has been used by organisms or lost as heat. Each level or energy transfer represents a trophic level. A food chain is a single sequence that shows the direct transfers of energy through trophic levels. A food chain begins with a single producer, the prickly pear cactus, that is eaten by an herbivore, the desert kangaroo rat. The herbivore is eaten by a carnivore, the western diamondback, that is also eaten by a carnivore, the red-tailed hawk. The food web shows many different food chains. Food chains tend to be very short, typically not exceeding four trophic levels. This is because most of the energy is lost when it is transferred from one level to the next. The ecological pyramid is a visualization of the energy content of each trophic level. The producers receive their energy from the sun. Only a small amount, about 10%, is passed on to the herbivores. This is because the producers use some of the energy for themselves, and much of it is lost as heat. Vegetables such as corn and soy are used to feed cattle in animal agriculture. Because of the energy loss, it takes a lot of corn to feed relatively few cows. Energy is lost again when humans eat the meat of the cow, and ultimately this large amount of corn only feeds one human. When humans eat the plants directly, much more energy can be harnessed, allowing the same amount of corn to feed more people. This is the reason climate scientists advocate for eating less meat as a helpful thing to do to reduce your carbon footprint. This doesn't mean everyone becoming a vegetarian. If, for example, more people ate no meat a few days a week, it would make a big difference in energy use and carbon emissions.